first thing you'll need to use is the twister. So we'll be putting on some straw onto this. So I'll give that to you there, Dad. And we'll be using some of the wet straw, nice long pieces to wrap around the hook. So I'm placing it around the hook and then Dad is going to twist this handle slowly and I'm going to hold the straw so that it gets nice and tight and I'm kind of twisting too along the way. Okay, stop there. And then I open this out before I get to the end because I don't want it to get too thin. And I'm going to get another piece of long straw. And we've wet this straw just to make it easier to work with. It's less harsh on your hands. And then this time, rather than folding it in half, I'm going to the top piece of the straw, just folding it back. And I'm opening up this piece here to make a hole, a gap. And these pieces here are gonna be claws. They're gonna claw onto this part here. So I'm gonna feed this part into that hole, push it in, and then twist again there, Dad. And as Dad twists, those pieces are clawing and trapping that new piece that we're after adding in. So I'm getting another piece again, folding down the top, opening up the tail of the last piece and feeding it into that hole, pushing it in there and then twist again. And as dad's twisting, I'm turning it just to get the really good tight grip on it as well. And you could keep making this for as long as you want, but we're gonna make it to about this length here because we only want it to be the circumference of our head, really, or our shoulders. So when you get it to the length that you want, just take it off the hook. And just check then if it's around the size that you want it to be, that it will fit down over your head to your shoulders. Or if you're a person that would rather your hat just to sit on your head, maybe if you're a flute player, you might want it just to be here. So you might need to make it a wee bit smaller. So to finish that hat there now, or the base of your hat, I'm going to tie it. So the bit that's left over, the tail, when you've decided on the circumference of your hat, you're just going to wrap it around to secure it. And then get some string and tie it there, just to keep it all together. And now I just give it a little bit of a haircut to tidy it up. So the straw I'm using is from a bale of straw that was baled with a loose belt specifically for thatchers. Ideally, it would be great to get it in sheaves that come straight out of the crop like here. Our oats are growing here and we'll be harvesting them shortly and using them to make straw boy costumes and mummer costumes. But for now we're working with the bale of straw and it's still long because it's used for the thatching. And it's pretty easy to grow. All we did was take a layer of soil or the grass off the top of the soil, clean it back, loosen it up a bit and shake some oat seed in it in April. It's about, they say for every stalk from the straw or the oats, it needs about the space of your fist to grow. So last year when I grew them, I planted them or sowed them quite densely and it didn't turn out very successful. They all fell over and they didn't have enough space to grow. So this year we learned our lesson and we have a really successful crop this year. Make sure before you start the next piece that your base of your hat is nice and round. You don't want it to be out of shape or have any knots or twisted like that. You need it to be nice and round 
so it'll dry in that shape then for your hat later on. The next step is to build the hat up with about 15 bunches of straw, depending on how dense you want your hat to be. So I'm pulling out bunches here to have them ready. It's always easier to have the bunches ready rather than trying to weave your hat and only have one hand then to pull your bunches out. I like to have them all laid out and ready to go. It's much quicker. So you need long straw for this because you want your hat to be really tall. You don't want it to be a really short hat that you can't weave very well. So with this, I tried to keep the oats at the top because we can use that then to decorate our hat afterwards. So rather than building this into the base of the hat, I use this as the base and then use these for the top then for the decoration. So if you had grown your own oats, you'd still have, you know, you wouldn't uh, hear on these the oats have been harvested and then baled but for when you're growing your own oats the oats will still be on it and they're really pretty for the decoration then afterwards for the top of your hat for doing different designs so you can see there that's some of my own that I've grown that I've picked and the oats are still in it. So using the base of my hat and using the uprights I'm going to place the upright and it can be as thick or as thin as you want it to be. It just depends, I guess. I like them quite thick, so it's a nice handful there. I guess of about maybe 12 or 14 pieces of straw in that. And I place it on the base. And here you can see I have the long piece on one side and the short piece on the other. And it's important that you place it on the outside of the ring. Don't place it on the inside and try weave from there place it on the outside and I clamp it with my thumb. So using this short piece I'm going to wrap it around the ring like this and then I pull it towards myself so rather than leaving it there just pull it towards yourself and that's the first part of the uprights woven in. So this hand is really important because it keeps the tension. If you let go of this, the whole hat will unravel. It's really important to keep it really tight because as the straw dries after a while, it will loosen. So I'll show you with the next piece. It's the same pattern all the way around. The next bunch again is going to hold the piece that I just brought towards myself. So I put it down on top of it and you can leave a big gap or a small gap depends on how thick you want your hat to be. You can see here again I have the long piece and I have the short piece and that short piece now is going to wrap around the ring so I bring it around it, bring it across back where it started and bring it back over towards myself and I hold it there, clamp it down, don't let it go because it will unravel. And these pieces here now you can start to see are the uprights of the hat. All of these will join together afterwards. So the next bunch. Again, the last piece that we brought, brought over to ourselves is going to be clamped by the next piece of uprights. The short piece and the long piece. Wrap it around the ring. Keep it nice and tight. Bring it towards yourself and clamp it. And sometimes uh, it often happens where you might leave yourself short. So it might be too short here to put the next one on. So you might need to unravel, go back and just make it a little bit longer at the end and then bring it around. Bring it over and over towards yourself. So you have a long enough piece to be able to clamp it. And you can see here now the weave starting to form. So the next piece. I'll keep going, put it on it, clamp it with your thumb. You have the long piece on this end and the short piece. Make sure you think it's going to be long enough to wrap around the ring and come over to yourself. So I think that's long enough there. I'm going to wrap it around, bring it over 
and clamp it with your hand. When I'm doing it, I try to keep all of the bunches that I'm using for the uprights, I try to keep them level as in all the bottoms are even rather than having like ones sticking out like that. I try to get them all evened up and that the stalks, the thick stalks are at the bottom and then the oat heads are at the top for decoration for later. So ready to weave again. Put it down. Short side, long side. Wrap around the short side, around the base ring and bring it over to yourself. So you can choose to work with the straw dry or with it dampened. I find it easier to work with it dampened, especially for making the rope at the start for the base of the hat. It's always easier when it's dampened. And it's easier as well to decorate your hat and design it in different ways. It'll work with you easier when it's wet and then it dries in that shape. So you can see now the hat starting to take shape. It'll be like that, but they'll all go up the way then. And this here is also how we make the skirt. So that exact pattern there, how we are weaving round, would be your skirt. But at the start, when we made our, our base rope, we tied it. But if you didn't tie it and left it open, you could just then tie it around your waist. And this would be your skirt then. I think we'll fit another one in here and that will be the end of it. Yeah, that should do. So the last one. Put it on, same as always. Sometimes I give this an extra little bit of length for the shorter side just to be able to weave it around at the end. So I wrap it around, same as always, wrap it around the ring, clamp it with the thumb, and then the bit that's left over, rather than just pulling it towards me and leaving it out like that, I kind of give it a wrap around again, around the ring, just to tuck it in. And hold it there. And now I'm going to tie it. And that's the base of your hat there. You can see the base of the hat woven all the way around. And this part is the part we're going to tie next. So this will be on your head and all these will be going up right now in a second and we'll be designing them in different ways. I give this part a good tie in because if this last one unravels, the whole hat comes apart. And really like, they didn't put a huge amount of effort into making these. Some of the hats today on display are so beautiful and so much work goes into them. But years ago, people would just make these hats, you know, the day before or even the day of the wedding gather together and just make them quickly if they were doing the straw boys. Sometimes they wouldn't even have time to make the hat, they'd just put a twist a lump of straw and put it up on top of their heads to disguise themselves. So they weren't for lasting more than one event really because the tradition is is that you, especially at the weddings, if you're well received and they give you some drink or food or money at the wedding, you're meant to throw them into the bonfire on the way home or at the wedding. And if you're not well received, you have to take off your hats and throw them high up into the trees outside the house so everybody passing by would know you'll have no luck in your marriage because you didn't welcome the straw boys. 
And same with the Rand boys and the Biddy boys and at Halloween and the Mummers. The hats weren't meant to last very long. They were just for one performance or two and then they were burnt to celebrate until they'd make new ones. So this is the base of the hat here and all the uprights that we're after weaving in. So now making sure it's nice and round, the next piece is to bring up all the uprights and tie it. So your center point, that's where you're working to get each piece of the uprights. So rather than just bunching them up together and holding them on the top, you want to take one at a time. So I'll take this one for example, I'll make sure that I have it all. And at this hand here, I'm going to keep it down, keep pushing down the base because you don't want to get it to the centre and then your hat to pucker up like that. You want to keep it grounded there. And then I'm catching in the centre point. Then the next one. And I pull it straight but keep it puckered down, nice bit of pressure on them because you want to get these nice and straight. Then the next one. And I keep doing this all the way around. So I'm keeping it really basic here. I'm just using it as it is, pushing it down. Some people might like plait some of these or do different weaves on them, but I'm just keeping it nice and simple. Next part, head for the center point, pressure down, make sure they're all nice and straight. So I keep doing this all the way around until I get to the last one. When I'm teaching the kids how to make these, or even some of the boys said it too, it's like uh, doing a girl's hair. A girl's hair with very curly hair. <laughs> and some of the boys were saying that we're involved with working with horses said it's like taking care of the horse's tails. But the one thing I tell all the children is that anybody, children or adults, any age, any nationality, any culture, everyone can be a mummer or a stroll boy or a wren boy or a biddy boy, whatever it is that you want to be, boys and girls. Everybody can sing, everybody can dance and move and create music. You don't have to be amazing at it or be a professional. That's not what this tradition is about. It's about bringing happiness and fun and divilment because you're in disguise. And carrying on a tradition, I guess, that lots of generations before us all did. It's great fun, especially when you're in disguise. People are far braver and bolder and mischievous when nobody knows who they are. Now you can see it taking shape. And now just to make sure it's even and that it's center and not leaning to one side and that all the pieces are nice and neatly gathered. You'll always have these stray bits, just like with your hair, when you're tying it up, there's always bits blowing away. <laughs> we'll tidy them up later. Now here, before we tie it, this is the important part. You need to decide how far down you want this hat to sit. Do you want to sit it on the top of your head? Do you want it just to sit below your chin? Do you want it to come down to your shoulders? And that will determine where you tie it. So if I want this to come down to my shoulders, it's just sitting there on my head, just, just around my chin. But if I wanted to come down further onto my shoulders, I would move my hand higher up. Or if I wanted it to sit on my head, I would move my hand lower down. But right there, I like it sitting just below my chin. And I'm going to tie that now. So I'm going to give this a good tie in here. And 
and I make sure it's really tight here because I don't want this to come loose afterwards when it dries out. Don't be afraid to give it a good tight squeeze to hold it in place. So this is the top of the hat and some people leave it open like that. I'm a fan of leaving it open and really messy like that, particularly if the oats were still on it. It's really beautiful. I'll just get my oats here, the ones I picked myself, and I'm gonna weave these in here as well so that we have some fresh oats in there. So you can decide here what design you want to do. It's a case of just uh, breaking it in two. It all happens through plaiting. So you could break it in two and plait these two pieces here and this piece over here and twist them into the shape that you want and they'll dry in that shape if they're wet they'll dry in whatever shape you twist them into or you could break it into four four separate pieces and do four plaits and then curl them into the crown like this they're just some ideas like you could be as creative as you want you could even build more straw into it as you're plaiting. Keep adding some in longer pieces and make huge long horns or it's completely up to yourself what you want to do. So I'm going to make, um, I might make two horns. So I'll break it into two. And then I just plait. So for the plaiting technique, you break it into three. And then you just weave one over the other like this. So bring in the outside one over the middle. The outside over the middle. And this is where you could weave in more straw. Just add it in here if you wanted to make really long horns or plaits. Twist it there for a second for it to hold. And now I'll do the other side. So break it into three again. And I'm plaiting the outside strand over the middle. Comes across on top. Some areas have their own design. Some people in communities might only do horns. Others might, I guess it depends on the person who's making them too. Other people might only have crowns. Some people have handles coming out of their hats. Others have pieces that will hang down out of the hats too in plaits. But uh, it's completely up to yourself, I guess, how you design them. I like making lots of different styles. It's really nice to see a group with loads of different hats. It's very interesting then to see each person what they're wearing. So there's my two horns. So I'm going to tie them with a bit of string so they don't come loose. Just two tiny pieces of string. And you can give them a haircut all you want to make them as neat as possible. I'm again a fan of messy and the wildness looks great in photographs. Some people would chop these guys off, but I think they're nice left on. Great, next bit now is just to give these guys a haircut. Any bits that look like they're hanging out. And particularly in here, that might be going up your nose <laughs> when you're trying to dance or 
we had a case the other night where the flute player, we were dancing at a wedding and the flute player took a deep breath in and a piece of straw went in with him. <laughs> so it's always good to give these a little bit of a haircut. I sometimes wear like a beanie underneath this hat like I wear it on my head and then put this hat on over it just to stop it from tickling or pricking me when I'm performing but it also can be really hot if you're performing indoor at a wedding or something but very much welcomed in the winter time at Christmas when you're traveling the roads with the mummers and ran boys so that's the the straw hat and just to finish I'm going to tie in some of my oats around here you could like do lots of different designs you could get some more oats and you know um, plait some string and decorate it around here and you could add some more down around here hanging off it you can be as elaborate or as, as simple as you want it to be but for me I like to have some fresh oats in it so I'm going to just wrap them around it. I just pulled these out of the crop there now, so they're really fresh. Some of them are still green. Great. I'll put it on. <laughs> 